All right, let's pray. All right, thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. Um, we thank you that um, you know we have somewhere where we can baptize people. And we thank you, Lord, for John and Vanessa. They've taken this step of obedience in order to publicly identify with your death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, we pray that you give them wisdom as they, they grow in the Lord. Uh, Lord, as they consider one another to be uh, husband and wife. And I pray, Lord, that in everything they do and everything they say and everything we do and everything we say will be honoring and glorifying and pleasing to you. So thank you, Lord, for this day. And we pray all these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, just want to say a couple of things. Uh, nothing that would be new to you guys, but like, well, I just like to remind everyone every time we have a baptism. So a couple of things on baptism. Number one is obviously that baptism, water baptism, does not save us. Right? It does not wash away sin. 1 Peter 3.21, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Obviously, we're saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is what baptism signifies and symbolizes. And this is why the Bible is saying that it's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but it's the answer of a good conscience toward God when somebody makes the decision to publicly identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So number two, so it's number one, that baptism doesn't save us. Water baptism doesn't save us. Number two is it's only for believers, right? That's why we don't baptize babies. Um, in Acts 8 we read, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So the eunuch asked, What's stopping me from getting baptized? And Philip answered, he said, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So we see here that this is why we practice what's called a believer's baptism. So it's once a person believes, then they can get baptized because it symbolizes obviously their, 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 um, um, their salvation, right? Their, their, their connection with the death, burial, and resurrection. So it wouldn't make sense if somebody's not even saved to get baptized. And this is why we practice baptism by immersion because it does picture the death, burial, and resurrection. This is why we go into the water. And we see here when Philip baptized the eunuch, he didn't just go get water and go and sprinkle him. They both went down into the water and he was baptized. So um, if it was just sprinkling, there would be no need for them to both stop and get into the water. So number three, um, we practice in our church, we baptize by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So not only do we say everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the practice that we see in Acts. Acts 19, verses 4 to 5, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on Him which should come after Him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we think about a name, see, a name carries authority, right? This is why when we do things by the name of Jesus Christ, we're doing it by His authority, and His name is the name that carries that authority. Acts 4, 7, it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? So we see the connection between somebody's name and the authority that that name carries. And this is how we understand Matthew 28, the Great Commission. We don't understand Matthew 28, the Great Commission, in isolation, just verse 19. We understand it in the context of verse 18 and verse 19, where it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, remember the power and the name? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. And I was always taught when the Bible says, when it says therefore, you need to find out what it's there for. Yeah. Right? So it's saying, go ye therefore, because it's referring to what Jesus just said, the fact that all power is given unto him. Then he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name by the authority of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So how do we understand that passage? It's not what we say when we baptize, right? It's by what authority we're baptizing. We baptize by the authority of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but who has all that authority? 
Jesus Christ. And that's why we do all things in word and deed by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the last thing I want to mention, and I've sort of talked about it already, that baptism represents the death, burial and resurrection. It says here in Romans 6, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, right, in the flesh, we shall, also in the, uh, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. That's talking about when we get our glorified new bodies. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So there's definitely a connection there between the death, burial, and resurrection. But I believe Romans 6 is talking about the spiritual baptism, being baptized into his death, that we are baptized, you know, we die in the flesh, but we're going to be raised a new body just as Jesus died in the flesh and he's going to, he, he was raised from the dead in a glorified new body. So the last thing I want you guys to think about is in, in Romans 6 is it says here in the first couple of passages, you know, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So we see here the passage is saying, hey, you know, baptism represents dying with Jesus Christ and rising again. And it says here that henceforth we should not serve sin. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So yes, baptism represents the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what it also reminds us of is that there ought to be a change in our life after we believe on Jesus Christ. We should want to live and walk in newness of life, that we should not henceforth serve sin. And that's what it should represent. You know, and obviously, you know, the Bible says in, in Romans 5, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So we know that even if we continue in sin, grace will abound. We'll always be saved. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, right? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we need to be reminded, you know, I want, want you guys to remember today that, you know, when we see a baptism, you know, yes, it reminds us of, of the death, burial, and resurrection, but it ought to remind us as well that, hey, as Christians, as believers that have identified with Jesus Christ, are we living the same as we did before we were saved? You know, we ought to be striving to grow in our knowledge, grow in our desire to serve God, you know, grow in our, in our works for God, that we should not henceforth live for sin. So getting saved, you know, it's not the end of Christianity, right? Getting saved is the beginning of Christianity. It's the beginning of your walk with Christ. And every day we should be growing. And when we, get, when we see a baptism, it ought to remind us, hey, my life should be different. My life should be different from the world. It should be different to how I was previously. And, you know, like the Bible says, that we should henceforth uh, live, that we should hen henceforth, we should not serve sin, but we should walk in newness of life. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> when you go away, Steve, that's what it's like. It's cold. <laughs> So John, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Yes, I have. Amen. <laughs> all right, my brother, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus, buried in the likeness of his death. Grace to walk in newness of life. Woo! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> It's really slippery in here. Yes! You're slimy, sad daddy! Yeah, really slimy. Do you want anything else I can grab you, man? Probably don't need to go as deep. God bless you, brother. Congratulations. Now to get out, preach the gospel, start getting public, and go for it. Remember when you go down. Is that coming with your cloth a little bit? It is, it is, yeah. Is that initial shot? It's not. It's not. Vanessa, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Yes, I have. Amen.
My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus, buried in the likeness of his death. Raised in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> something